All right. So welcome to our Metro Archives. This is where we're going to be touring today on our Metro Connect 2020 virtual tour. So the archives, as you probably know, is a division of the Nashville Public Library. And the mission is to collect and preserve historical documents and, and valuable records of Metro government. So it's very specific to Metro Nashville. And in all, the archives has 5 million records dating back from the 1780s, so quite a history. This is Ken Feith, a top, high atop the mountain on a snowy day. Um, he is the Metro Archivist. He has 38 years of um, archive management experience. And he, this is a fun fact about Ken, is the first Tennessean that has, was ever admitted to the American Academy of Certified Archivists. So we're very, very lucky to have Ken um, within Metro government and as our head archivist. And he's gonna be joining us a little bit later. Thank you for patience. Hi, I'm Ken Feith with the Metro National Archives. We're a division of the National Public Library. The library has uh, local and regional branches around the county, uh, for metropolitan government. Uh, we've been with the library. We were created in uh, 1986 or so, and then uh, attached to the library. We've been with the public library ever since, and it's been a lot of fun. So today I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the Metro Government Archives, what we do, what our mission is, uh, things like that. When you first come into the archives, you'll be coming into the third floor of the main public library downtown on Church Street. So you come to the third floor on the west side. As you come down, you go through this hallway into the archives, and we have a, an interactive panel here with some of the uh, photographs and things like that that we have in the collection. Now, our mission is to collect and preserve the historically um, important records of Nashville and Davidson County, and that includes uh, the old county records, the city of Nashville, and then metropolitan government. So we have all those things. We have, uh, this is our, our public presence here. We have most of the high use records here and the oldest records here. And then we have a storage facility that has a, a, a conditioned air, light, and all that. And we use that out there for storage of the other material we have. Currently we have records here from 1780 down to about um, 2010 or so. We get our records through a process, uh, records disposition authorization, which it goes from the uh, department to uh, the record center, and then the archives looks at it for retention of anything of historical value. And then at that point it would come to us, so we have records from a little bit of everywhere. But as you come, first come in, you'll see these um, screens up here, and it just gives you an idea. It's got four categories: live, work, learn, and play. You know, and then of course, the, of course, the miscellaneous. You know, so you pick a place, and then it'll bring up where um, yeah, it'll bring up the schools, and these are the schools that we have photographs of. Uh, we have a large uh, education records, of course. Uh, all the schools we try to put on here. These are city property schools. Um, these are the um, churches. Yeah. And so we've got a lot of photographs of Nashville. You know, Nashville has changed so much that we found we're putting out more photographs of what Nashville looked like before. And a lot of our research now is going toward land records. People want to know who, who, when my house was built, who lived there before, what the land was before. And so the um, research here has kind of changed. We don't, we can do genealogy, but we don't do as much anymore because of ancestry and heritage quest and all those. So right now we're doing a lot of uh, land research, that sort of thing. And so these kind of photographs uh, we put out for people. And so when you come down the hallway, uh, we're open to the public, of course. Uh, it's nine to six, Monday through Friday, uh, Saturday, nine to five, Sunday, two to five. Of course, right now with uh, the COVID pandemic, uh, we're close to the public. We can do a curbside service, um, limited amounts of that. 
Uh, this is our research room. This is where you would come to interact with the staff. We have reference desks here. You can come in and ask uh, whatever question you have about researching in Nashville, Tennessee, Nashville, Davidson County. Uh, we have, um, we, we, from here we have our, uh, we're working on databases of all our collections, basing it on uh, either streets or names or whatever the collection has. Uh, in here you'll see reference books that um, that will speak to the collection we have. Uh, we don't lend, of course. Uh, we're um, uh, non-lending. Uh, as a person comes in, we have an exhibit up right now on women's suffrage. Uh, you know, Nashville, uh, Perfect 36, Tennessee, and so Nashville's instrumental in that. This is the Charter of Incorporation for the Women's uh, Suffrage League here in Tennessee, the Suffrage Association. Those are charter books. We have a lot of charters, and we, um, of course, we're scanning and filming. One thing we have that's a bit unusual for a, a local archives is the newspapers. We have them from, oh, the middle 1800s down to about 1950. And so we don't normally pull those, but if you want like these mastheads, if there's some special date like this or like Pearl Harbor or whatever, we can scan that and send it to you. Uh, it's interesting that uh, the um, we're conserving a lot of um, time and a lot of uh, effort in these books. We're trying to conserve the books and the documents we have because we can scan it and send it to you. So it's not necessarily important for you to come in. Uh, you can save travel time. You don't have to park. Uh, you don't have to have fuel. Uh, there's a lot of things involved. You know, you don't have to make time to come down here. You know, we, we are open um, a good deal of time for someone to come in, but it's not exactly necessary. If you want to email us, you want to call, uh, generally, if it's something small or easy to do, you know, we can't do advanced research uh, like that if you want to come in and want to look at something that might involve four or five different record groups. We can't really do that right now. But if you want a document or a marriage license or a, a uh, particular date in a newspaper, that sort of thing we can do for it. Um, and this, this is where you would come to do that on a, on a normal day, regular day. Um, in here we have all of these records are open for public use. So someone can come in, and if you just want to browse, you can just come in. Uh, the, the, the circuit court minutes are here, the whole county court minutes. Um, uh, going back, you know, most of our book bound volumes go back to the creation of the county in about 1780. Uh, the state required all the counties to keep these kinds of things in a, quote, bound volume. So a lot of these uh, we just bound up and we have them. Um, we're, we're proud to have them. They, they've been through a lot, fires and floods and everything else, but um, the county courts have been really good about uh, preserving and protecting them, and so they're here now. Um, <clears throat> if you want to do your research, we are closed stacks, so what we will do is pull the record for you and bring it out. And so, say you're looking at something that involves a lot of research. You know, we have people coming in to do uh, thesis papers or dissertations or books, whatever. And if you've got a lot of uh, research you need to do, you come in, have a seat, and we'll pull the records for you. Uh, this would be the area where you do your study and your work and so forth on the collection. And when you're finished, we would get it and, and put it back in the stack. So uh, we are closed in that manner. Uh, now we do have, of course, all the books you see in here are open to the public. So you're welcome to look through the marriage records or look through the county court records, whatever you want to do. So just, just let us know. Um, we currently have a display up about the, the National 36, 36 women in National that made uh, significant efforts in either in suffrage or being the first woman to do something, something in town, uh, that first effort from America to do something. Um, a lot of these women, uh, we wanted to concentrate on something that was related to Nashville, Nashville, Davidson County. And so we're trying to pull those together. Uh, Georgiana McConnell was uh, actually tried out for the Mercury 13. She was one of the women that was in the running to be uh, an astronaut, the first female astronaut back in the 60s. <laughs> and then we have, of course, Tootsie's, of course, and some of the other ladies here, Maggie Porter. We've had this display up, and of course, about the time we got it all together, the pandemic hit, so we've had it, but uh, uh, we're glad to show it off virtually.
Johnson, we put her out, of course, because she was our first librarian. Uh, there's a, a letter to her in the, in the public library collection. We have a letter from uh, Melford, Melford Dewey, the uh, Dewey Decimal System. Yeah. And of course, a little more modern, we have uh, the first uh, Metro Mayor, Megan Beery. And we have, uh, of course, the, one of the first female detectives. Harper was in this video, one of the key legislators, and of course Gail Ray, our first female uh, sheriff. Uh, and we have others, uh, Dr. Brown, Dr. Dorothy Brown, was one of the first African American women on the council. Uh, she was a medical doctor, a physician. Okay, and so when you get through in here, if you want to come back in, uh, you can work here or in here, it doesn't matter. Uh, come to the counter and ask for whatever you might need, and we'll pull it for you. Uh, a lot of our materials we have on databases and spreadsheets so we can find things for you and pull them. And of course, we have another display here of uh, women's suffrage. Uh, the uh, sash the lady has on is from the actual, is, is a copy of one that was used during that time in the 1919 the Votes for Women. Uh, this um, uh, dress is on loan from Skirit Bennett. We don't really have a lot of artifacts here. Mostly it's documentary. Uh, Three-dimensional things are uh, more museum type things, so we don't have the, a lot of capability to care for it. So we have things on loan that illustrate some of our collection. Um, this is the reference counter where you come. Uh, we have a staff of four, myself and four other archivists that work here. Uh, we'll be glad to help you in any way we can. Uh, keep in mind, this is only Davidson County. So we only have things Davidson County, Nashville, and Metro. So if you're looking for something outside that area, you probably won't have it. We'll help you uh, locate it, but we wouldn't have it. Um, if you come through here, as I said before, we do a lot of scanning. Uh, we scan records to make them available. What we're trying to do is get all of our uh, historical information as accessible as possible. So we want as much public access to it. As I said before, it eliminates a lot of uh, downtime, trying to travel here, congestion in town and all that. A lot of records we have, especially the late 20th century, we scan it if it's not, uh, archives follows a set of um, values, I guess, and we have four or five values that determine whether or not we, actually, we keep an actual document. And so late 20th century, Everybody knows what paper looks like, you know, so what we do is generally scan that and do a quality control and then we'll destroy it. And archives uses the term destroy a lot, but what we really mean now is recycle. And so we recycle a lot of the material from the 20th century. Um, you know, it's just simply um, we're looking for the evidentiary value of it. So it's the information on it rather than the actual document. Uh, we do have documents that we keep because they're either intrinsically valuable or they're culturally valuable to Davidson County. And I can show you some of those in the safe. But basically, this is our work area. We have, of course, large format scanners, uh, copiers, all the standard things you see in the office. We do a lot of scanning. We scan our um, 35 millimeter negatives now. We have about 25, 30,000 of those that we begin to scan. Uh, we have probably photograph collections, probably. 100,000 images, maybe it's, it's, it's huge. Um, so we work here. We also do conservation. So what we can do is clean and flatten documents. Uh, a lot of documents uh, were stored in the courthouse and they have coal dust on them. And so what our, what our uh, procedure is, is to take those documents, clean the coal dust off, and flatten them and put them in folders. And so it's kind of a preservation effort. And if there's anything that needs to be done, if it's torn or whatever, we can mend that with archival uh, procedures, not with tape and things like that. So that's what we do uh, with a lot of the records from the 19th century. Uh, we do, we had a volunteer program. So if, if people want to come in and volunteer to work, uh, this is our, our stack area. The lights come on. Come on, lights. There we go. This is our stack area. This is what's closed to the public. And we, um, come back here and pull it for you. And this is our work area back here where we do um, processing of collections, getting things cleaned and flattened, uh, getting them preserved. Uh, 20th century paper has a lot of acid in it, and so it'll turn yellow. And so that's why it turns yellow, because the light interacts with the acid. 
So we've got to get the acid out and we do that. Uh, this is a laminator where we put uh, mylar. It's kind of a plastic and we encapsulate things. Um, you know, if you have a document or two, a family document that you want to preserve, um, email us or give us a call. We can either show you how to do that or we can give you some tips on how to preserve your family papers, uh, where to get supplies, things like that. We'll be glad to help with that. And keep in mind, if it's a, uh, if it's a very Nashville uh, family or a group, we might be interested in scanning it, returning it to you. So, you know, we're building our information, right? Um, okay. Uh, of course, our map cases back here. We have maps of Nashville. Our map collection is not as strong in old maps. It's more um, 50s, 60s forward. You know, when Na Nashville was the first metropolitan government in the United States, and so the run-up to that in the 1950s, we were mapping everything. We were mapping the council districts, the wards, all the thing, all sorts of things about uh, the county. And so we've got a lot of that. Uh, we have a lot of architectural drawings of buildings here in town that have been built. We have over here, we also have like, uh, they call them uh, broad sheets. It's like a, it's like a poster size sheet uh, advertising a sale, you know, the, <clears throat> when something went bankrupt, the Chancery Court would uh, order it be sold at the courthouse by the sheriff, you know. And so we have them in the 1840s and 50s and they're, they're huge. They don't have the, the printed out about when and the sale's gonna be and it's a farm and it has a wood lot, lot to it and all this stuff. So we have a lot of that over there. Um, the safe is for what we call the G whiz things. Uh, we have things in here that are, are culturally significant. Uh, we have, um, um, so you might have heard by now, we have James K. Polk's will and Sarah Polk's will. Um, President Polk is buried on the Capitol grounds and there was an effort, of course, to move him to Columbia where he was born. And so we had a lot of activity in his will. Uh, there are other account books in here. There are, unfortunately, there are in, enslaved uh, people's records here. Uh, we also have, um, you may have heard of the Drury Photographic Studio. Uh, we have uh, Katrina Drury's diary when she left Germany to come to uh, Nashville. Uh, the, the silver cup, we got a polish, but the silver cup is, uh, we won the cleanest town contest in 1928, and so we got a cup, you know. Um, there's also, um, uh, this is the, uh, let me pull this down for you. This is the prototype of the Fanger. This is the very first one, and this was done by an advertising agency here in town, and uh, when they closed out, they gave us two. So we have the original Fanger. <laughs> there was some school, some school records in there, things like that. Uh, Andrew Jackson documents in there, things like that. Uh, we have, um, of course, James K. Polk's will. He wrote it as while he was president. So that's a rarity for us. And we also have a University of Nashville diploma in there that was signed by Polk, Jackson, Felix Robertson, all the big movers and shakers here in early. So we keep that thing in there. You know, it doesn't get out much. It doesn't travel much, you know. Um, let's see. More, we have our map collection. The, the red rack you see back there is where we clean and flatten. We have a, uh, a water bath where we um, take documents and gently unfold and we can put them as, uh, as the water relaxes them, we can take them off paper, you know, things glued to paper, glue is organic, so it'll come off easily, and we just put them here, and once it dries, we can uh, process them and put them in folders or whatever we need to do. In here, the um, the stack area here is, um, I'll have to say that the, the library did a, an outstanding job in getting this area ready for the collection. The library um, was very aware of uh, archives and the special needs we have for collections. And so this room, the airflow is constant. It continually moves in here, so uh, there's no mold. It keeps mold and things like that down. The lighting is shielded, so there's no UV rays coming into the collection that they soak up. Uh, of course, the lights go off at night, you know, to save energy like, like they should. Uh, we have motion detectors in here, so when you come in, the lights come on. Uh, if we're in here for a few minutes and the lights go, may go off, I don't know, but. Uh, so uh, we have that, so we try to conserve as much as we can. Um, the um, the uh, fire suppression system in here is dry pipe, 
So all the ceiling has no water in it, so there's no way it leaks. Uh, one thing neat about it is that um, there are pressure fit fittings up there that uh, if a fire is in a particular area, uh, it will just spray, the sprinkler will wet that area and nothing else. So the library did an outstanding job in here. Uh, it's, it's a great room for this type of, uh, um, matter of fact, it's probably, I'll, I'll say this, but I can't back it up. Uh, it's probably one of the best for local archives in Tennessee. Uh, it's, it's amazing the way they did it. Um, you know, of course, we have the big book scanner. We you know, scan large format up to newspaper size, and we're doing that with the newspaper collection to scan. Um, there was a large, there's uh, back in the 20s and 30s, this process called uh, photo reviewer, and it's a very good quality photograph. And we've been going back and scanning those and putting them on our servers. Uh, you see our newspapers up there. Those large books are plat books, all sorts of um, land records, you know, plats of <clears throat> laying out a subdivision, laying out the lots in the subdivision, uh, things like that. Uh, we have uh, just our standard collection. These are Hollinger boxes. They're archival museum quality. Uh, we put things in those, we put them in folders, acid free folders, we put them here. Uh, the marriage licenses, you know, we have the original license back to 1780. The original wheels, uh, a lot of different types of material. Um, you know, if you have an interest in a particular thing about Nashville, uh, just let us know. We'll be glad to do what we can for you to find it. Uh, we, we, that's what we enjoy doing. And the fun part of this is sometimes the hunt to see what we can find for you. Uh, now, a lot of this material is on microfilm or it has been scanned. So generally some of this, if you're looking for a particular thing, We'll be glad to do it. Or if the film you can't read, or if something wrong with it, we'll be glad to pull it. Um, you know, we're, the the goal here is to preserve these for future generations. But uh, if you do need something, we'll, we'll be glad to scan it for you. And remember, you don't necessarily have to come in. So you can do that from from uh, a distance. You know, you don't have to come downtown and fool with all that. Um, hopefully, when we be op we'll be opening soon. I don't know when. But when we do, we'd love to see you. Come by for a visit sometime. Uh, sorry. <laughs> That's another, another interruption. But uh, we, and we do take phone calls. <laughs> So anyway, that's the Metro Archives. If you have questions, uh, let me know. We'll be glad to help you any way we can. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all. I hope that uh, a huge thank you to our tour guide, Ken Feith, who is here with us right now as well. And I hope that all of you enjoyed our tour of Metro Archives, but we're not done yet. So um, we have just a few more minutes of Metro Connect and I'm Laurel with General Services and want to open it up to do Q&A with our host, Ken. And so if um, for you all who are participating, by the way, thank you all for putting questions in the chat. Hopefully your questions were answered, but now this is the time to ask Ken one-on-one -on -one some of your questions. And so uh, this is what we're gonna try is that if you do have a question, if you can unmute yourself and introduce yourself in the department you're with, and then ask Ken the question and then mute yourself again and then Ken will answer your question and then we'll go to the I'll next question. <laughs> So, um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, so Ken, are you ready to take I'm some here. questions? Hello. Sure. Okay. Hello. Great. Great. All right. So if anybody has a question, then go ahead and unmute and reminder to introduce yourself in the department you're representing. Well, I'll kick off with one, Ken. Um, so I think I asked you in our little breakout session about what your oldest, oldest archive item is. Can you share that with, with everybody? Uh, sure. The, the oldest thing we have is a will uh, to, by, written by Jonathan Jennings. He was uh, mortally wounded in a, an attack uh, on the Cherokee uh, before, when, when settlement occurred here. And so there was no court, there was no state, there was no anything. So he, he knew he was dying, so he wrote out his will and he gave it to his friend and a friend held the thing until we actually had a court and then he um, submitted it to the court. So that's the oldest thing we have. It's from 1780. So far, that's the oldest thing we found. That's before statehood. That's before Nashville was a town. So it's just very, very early for here. 
I have a question. Yeah, sure. My name's Deborah Frederick. Um, I was in a chat room with you earlier and I'm with uh, the Bellevue Branch Library. I'm just curious. So if someone has something that they'd like to donate, do you have a criteria it has to meet or um, what is your standard that has to be met for something to be in the archive? Well, generally with uh, our collection development, it has to be something that's related to Nashville or Davidson County. So if it's something that's outside of that, no, uh, we wouldn't take it. If it's something that relates to some kind of national event with the person was from Nashville, like it's something about, say, World War II, and they serve. Well, if they're living in Nashville, yes, we take that. So it has to somehow be related to Nashville and Davidson County for us to take it. Uh, normal, we get government records through a different process, and we take those. But anything brought in a, a manuscript collection, it has to relate somehow to the history of our town. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Hey, Andrew. Andrew. this oh, is yeah. Jenny uh, with the Natural Public Library, uh, Maine. And I, I had just wondered, do you have a lot of Civil War related documentation? And do you have, I know that that's a huge uh, area that people ride on and study. And I just wonder how much business you get. Well, we, we don't get a lot because uh, Nashville fell in March. Have a huge bump. Nashville fell in March of 1862 and was occupied by the Union Army. So there isn't a lot of uh, business just went straight on. So we don't have a lot pertaining to the Civil War because Nashville was under the occupation. We do have a few things, but when uh, the military came in, uh, military police, military justice, so all of that was in a, a slightly different realm. And most of that would be at the state or the national level. So for the, the Civil War, uh, really everything just went on as normal, uh, buying and selling and wills and all that sort of thing. You see a few things in the collection that were either soldiers uh, wrote a will and registered it here, something like that. Uh, we have uh, like bills of lading from some of the ships. Um, during the Civil War, there were um, a lot of river traffic coming in. And so uh, you see a lot of uh, bills of lading for ammunition or uniforms or whatever, you know. So there's some things, but not not what you would expect. And Nashville uh, returned to the Union so quickly uh, that the military occupation didn't last past 1869. So most of the damages that the Union Army did here uh, would be in our Chancery Court. There are some things. So yeah, yeah, there's some Civil War stuff, but not not what you think. You know? Yeah. But if you have a specific thing you're looking for, we'll give it a shot. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Fife. This is Monica with the Parthenon Museum and my beloved intern, Margaret. Hi, folks. Hi. Hey, and this is more of a practical question. We are currently inventorying and um, ultimately digitizing our archival holding, which doesn't compare to uh, what you guys have. Uh, We have about 500 photos, 300 pieces in our archives, and uh, about 600 books, and uh, we want to offer them online. So my my job is to try and get our collection uh, into the 21st century, and I'm wondering if we could collaborate. Uh, You have all these beautiful equipment, and I'm doing research trying to figure out where we can send um, some of our large format documents out to be scanned. Um, but I'm wondering, is, is that something you've done with other metro organizations? Could we come by with some stuff and scan it? And actually, I, I have a lot of questions that I'd love to pick your brain on um, as far as this project, because right now it, it feels kind of massive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we would love to help. And that's one of the things by doing this Metro Connect that we really wanted to do is show Metro, this is what we do, and these are the services we offer, you know, and and yeah, we'd be glad to collaborate with you on something. Our big scanners are back there. Uh, if you need any help with anything, with organizing questions about archives or management or how to digitize it or whatever, just come over and ask, and if we, <laughs> we can't figure it out, we'll find some white nose. I mean, we got a really good folks here that, that have done a lot of this, so yeah, just just uh, email us, call, come over one day, and we'll figure it out. Many thanks. Oh, sure. sure. <laughs> There's always a plan B. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Okay, we have time for one more question. Does anybody else have another question for Ken? All right, well, I'll ask a follow-up question, Ken. Um, it's very impressive, our archives here. How do we compare to other cities um, similar to Nashville? Are, are we pretty elaborate in our archives or are we lagging behind? Well, uh, <laughs> you did ask me, so uh, we're gonna be very competitive. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Metro Nashville has the, has the best, um, <laughs> one in Tennessee, uh, we've got, we do more digital. We started it earlier. We've, we've got a lot of firsts here. So yeah, I mean, I, me, I'd have to say yes. We're uh, we're ahead of the curve as far as local archives in Tennessee. Um, from the ones I've visited, yeah, we're, we're way ahead. We've got a lot of support. You know, we're a division of the public library, and the library supports us quite well. And so, uh, in this metro, one of these, this is one of the things that I'm excited about because I get to put the word out about the archives and what we do to the other departments, and I want to help and to share. So, uh, yeah, we're we're way ahead of the curve as far as Tennessee. Can't, other states probably probably not they have larger, better, bigger programs. But for Tennessee, yeah, we're, uh, we're the best. Great. Well, thank you. And if you all have other questions that pop up, you can probably find Ken Feith in the Outlook and Metro Outlook, and you can ask him directly and hopefully be able to visit him sometime soon uh, when we open back up to the public. And so I'm now going to turn it back over to Jennifer. Heard, but here I am, Jennifer Westerholm, and we're going to do a quiz. Um, so I'm putting the instructions for the quiz in the chat. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen. I want you guys to open up a browser either on your phone or your computer, and we're going to go to menti.com, and um, we are going to take a quiz. So let's see. I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. So um, open up a browser and or, or your phone and go to menti.com and enter this code. And you should see a place to put like a nickname. Um, you'll get a little emoji kind of thing or not emoji, but character that's you. And you'll, um, you'll put in your nickname and you'll be able to join our quiz. Think. So, okay. Wait, a few more people joining. I'll give you a few more seconds.
of our Metro Archives. Okay, let's see who is winning. Oh my goodness, Margaret the intern. You know how it's done. Good job, Margaret. Okay, we have one more question. You guys can redeem yourselves. Let's see what you can do, Mars and LaRosco. Congratulations. Great job, Margaret, the intern. Uh, maybe we need to hire you full time as a Metro employee because you are fast and you got them all right. Great job. Margaret, the intern, you want to give us a little. Oh, what? Margaret, the intern is going to get a custom socket water bottle sent to her as her prize. It's pretty awesome. I have one myself. So congrats. Thanks for playing, everybody. So much fun. Laurel, you want to get us wrapped up here? Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. This is our first Metro Connect virtual tour. We hope that you've learned something or several things about Metro Archives. A huge thank you to our host, Ken Feith, for taking time and you and all your staff for all the great work you do. All of you as participants are going to be receiving a survey to, uh, to tell us how we're doing here with our Socket uh, Metro Connect tour. Uh, apologies for a few technical snafus, but uh, this is our first one. So uh, overall, we're really excited for you all to join us and we have several more still to come. So be looking for that survey in your inbox. And then to sign up for more tours, you can visit our website. It's in the chat. It's socket.national.gov slash connect. And uh, same process, you'll sign up and be a part of our next tour. I think our next one is Thursday morning. So coming up right after each other and uh, in your survey, you also have the opportunity to give us ideas and other tours that we can do either virtually or maybe once we get back into person too. So please be thinking about that and ways we can improve and things you liked. And um, again, a huge thank you all for taking time to be with us at Metro Connect. Uh, this is on behalf of Jennifer Westerholm, myself and Michelle Hammond from General Services. And also a huge thank you to HR department, the Human Resources Department for making this a reality. So you all have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. And again, a huge thank you to our tour guide, Kent. And thank you for joining us here on Metro Connect. Bye, Bye. everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Have a great day. Take care. See you next time.